It's eerie, it's dark, it's spooky. It's kind of, it's kind of adventures uh, at the night. You see unexpected things along the way, so you have to react uh, according to it. You always have to check your legs because you know you don't know what's what's creeping around the ground. And ah uh, uh, yeah, we have you know snakes and all that. It is a bit spooky. Sometimes door slams on the inside the buildings, and then you have to react uh, for that. You've obviously got your your rodents and your reptiles as well that live off the land here, so it's. I've been in more comfortable places. For nearly half a century, UN soldiers have patrolled the buffer zone's decaying streets, supervising ceasefire lines. Their role is to prevent further fighting between Greek Cypriots in the south and Turkish Cypriots in the north after the conflict back in 1974. This is the first time they've allowed us to film this place at night. So this is what nearly half a century of rust and dust looks like in what is the world's last divided capital. No one knows just how many more years these cars might be sitting here uh, or what the future is in terms of a resolution uh, between both sides here in Cyprus. One, two, this is Tutu Charlie. Sam, why can we hear voices? The incredible thing about it is uh, we're here in the buffer zone. And, uh, Literally 15 metres out of here behind that wall, uh, there's people in restaurants having something to eat, having a few drinks, just generally having a good time. It does kind of feel quite eerie, doesn't it, hearing voices? It does, especially with the surroundings we've got here. Um, you know, this car 50 years ago would have been brand new. Uh, it's with 30 kilometres on the clock, so delivery mileage, and that's just covered in dust like an old relic. The buffer zone extends over 180 kilometres across the island. 800 UN troops and more than 60 UN police officers deal with hundreds of incidents each year. So what sort of things have this battle group encountered whilst they've been here? Uh, so violations that we've come across in the last week uh, is illegal migrant activity. And that's happened twice in the last week alone. One night I was on guard and there was a migrant activity at Chittinkaya Moat. So the quick reaction forces was calling and Kopomori was the leader out of the team, three teams. Uh, he went there, called the UN police. The UN police arrived because they are in charge of dealing with these migrants. And it was handed over to the UN police to deal with these migrants. So that was quite a big night. Yeah, it was, it was actually a big night, yeah. It's almost time for this battle group to leave and return home to be reunited with their families. But it's clear just how much it means to them to have been part of a UN mission. We're here to maintain the peace. I don't think Cyprus wants to see what happened again uh, 40 odd years ago. Equally so as I don't think the rest of the world want to see it again. So we will come here and we will continue to patrol these areas and try and prevent or deter anything from that ever happening again. Being part of Six Red and being part of Octosca means a lot, especially as private soldiers. And um, we've got, as I said earlier, we've got the responsibility of taking care of this whole buffer zone. And it, it gives us a sense, it's a sense of a big responsibility on us. It's a privilege to be out here. Um, said it's challenges, the heat, away from family, eight, nine, ten months at a time. Um, but overall, it's a privilege, it's a proud moment for everybody. Um, you get to work with people from all over the world. Uh, sure, we've got like 16 different nationalities within within uh, sector two. Um, overall, it's been it's been a, a, a pleasant experience to work. Meanwhile, the rest of the world can only watch and wait to see whether the Cyprus problem will ever be solved. Sean Grzechek, Forces News in the UN buffer zone, Cyprus. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.